With each new DLC, sometimes modifications have to be made, and that's no different with any build I use or any weapon choice that I use, such as I used to hate Telesto before the Menagerie came out. It just wasn't really needed for the pace that I was going for Gambit and things like that. And then once the Menagerie came out, there was a ton more AI, and it was just like an ultimate ad clear weapon, and in my opinion, one of the best weapons in the game right now, as far as ad clearing and just overall general purpose. And the same thing happens with my build, such as the Parashock. Had to do a little more tweaks to it, to kind of make it have a faster pace for Menagerie and ad clearing, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I was going to do a brief update, but I was like, dude, this is the last Parashock build before Armor 2.0, and one day, in the very near future, this is going to be just a relic build that we'll look back on and remember the old Parashock days before building got a little more extreme. So let's hop into this. Let's learn about the ultimate Parashock build and give it a good old farewell. So let's talk about the stats first. They're changed a little bit. It says 609, but we're obviously using traction as always. So you add a plus one to what your mobility says, making get a seven mobility with a nine recovery. Those who are unfamiliar with how beast mobility is, Whenever it can fit into a build, it is one of the greatest things you can have, especially in harder difficulty, such as 259 Handicap Nightfalls that you saw me do the other day with Utipers, or if you're doing anything such as a Heroic Menagerie. Having mobility on your build just makes it that much quicker to take less shots and be able to get away that much faster when ads can one or two shot you, such as the difficulty I'm in right now, which is a 259 Handicap. Somebody commented the other day saying that a 210 Handicap was the max and if you go to 259 it's just for bragging rights that is completely idiotic to think that and that wouldn't even be in the game to make it a 259 if 210 was the exact same and I even went to test that to see if something had changed and no when you're at 259 you're doing about half the damage as if you were at a 210 handicap which I'm not gonna short credit anybody who does a 210 handicap nightfall or a 220 or anything like that but to compare it to a 259, I'm sorry, it's just idiotic. You can get down so much quicker. The AI are smarter the higher you make your handicap. You don't do nearly as much damage. You have to make every move count. And when I was talking about Recluse and Loaded Question, you can use those weapons, but I'm talking about speed killing. And when it comes to speed killing, you're not going to be able to go as fast with those weapons because you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and run in there with a the submachine gun and try to battle them out, even with the Master of Arms perk proc, because they're going to gang up on you, they're going to shoot a lot faster, move around a lot more, you're not going to be able to do as much damage because you're going to be 49 light under, which is one light above before it says they're immune to your damage. So it requires a specific type of weapon to do this light difficulty, and that was what I was getting at when it comes to speed killing faster than somebody else. It's not that it's a competition, but let me give you some backstory of where I came from, and this is not to brag, okay? Even though it's going to sound showboaty or whatever, because people will just love taking me the wrong way, but... I came from the Nightfall and Strike Point system from D1, and what that was is it calculated the amount of kills you would get, plus the time completed for the Nightfall or the Strike. So you couldn't run past every ad, you had to clear every ad for points, and then also it calculated your time completed. And I used to race people every day and every week on this on Guardian.gg back when they used to keep ranks and all this stuff, and I used to place first every week, and I would learn how to build out, I would learn how to use certain weapon loadouts, everything that could give me an advantage over somebody else is what I used to build for. So I had a huge head start over everybody trying to make builds in Destiny 2 because I came from a hardcore playing field in D1 when Nightfalls and everything used to be so much harder than it is in D2. So like I said, it's not to brag or anything, but when I talk about specific weapon loadouts or what's going to make you faster or quicker or more beast, that's where I'm coming from. And it's not to sound like a douche or whatever, it's just, that's, how else can I say it, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm getting at. When it comes to those type nightfall levels, you have to use a specific weapon loadout to do it faster than somebody else. It's not that I'm always going to use Telesto or always use a specific weapon. I can use any weapon and speed kill against somebody. It's just I like to gain advantages and I like to use specific weapons when I'm trying to go as fast as possible. So I'm giving you background experience and knowledge from that experience. The wisdom from experience is basically it. And it's helping out a lot of people who are taking that wisdom and that's all I can really tell you, man. I'm trying to help the player base become a beast. And I've been there. I've placed ranks in it. 
I know what is what it takes. You know what I mean? I just know what it takes. That's all I can tell you, dude. It's just trolls. I get tired of it. And I wanted to give people backstory on what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from. I've been there. I know how to build out for it. Even though the point system doesn't exist anymore, I still naturally build out for it because that's one of the most fun things I do in Destiny. And that's actually what got me addicted to Destiny was the strike point system back in D1 and racing other guardians to be the fastest one. That was really what just sealed the deal and made it be my main game. I don't post solos anymore. I stopped doing it because I just got burnt out on doing it, honestly, because everybody's doing solos now. So I just decided to start teaching people how to do it. But hopefully in September, they bring back the point system, make racing fun again, because that was really what really made the game fun for me. And I know that if other people got into it, they would also find it just as fun. And if it does come back, you'll have a ton of knowledge to be able to compete in it and beast against other guardians. So that's the niche of the channel teaching and creating beast players now let's get into the subclass the one that i recommend even though it is a neutral subclass i've always been a huge fan of the bottom tree it's like a titan smash you can stagger enemies up to eight seconds to allow your fire team to do more damage while the boss or the ads can't do anything and it also gives you a ton of armor so if you're about to die you can landfall to stagger or give yourself a ton of shielding to prevent you from dying. I use it a ton in Harder Nightfalls because if I'm about to go down, it's like you get almost immune damage for a minute and allow yourself to recover while the boss or whoever is staggered around you. Top Tree does last a lot longer, but when it comes to difficult activities, having that staggering capability, it just outweighs any benefit that the chaining capabilities of Top Tree give you or the longevity of the Top Tree, not counting the other perks that Bottom Tree gives you, such as Rising Storm. Hitting a charge melee against somebody, you don't even have to kill them, but it gives you a huge chunk of super energy and a huge chunk of grenade and melee energy and also stacks with perks like enhanced impact induction, which is really nice to have. Check out how fast I get my super back from halfway just by having Brawler on. So if you have modifiers such as Brawler that all stack with these perks, you can get your super back so quick. And just because of the helmet that I'm going to be using, the Crown of Tempest, having the conduction tines allows it to charge back even quick as well. And then Arc Soul, whether you're doing a team related activity or a solo activity, it's nice to have this at your side at all times because it can take care of targets while you're taking care of other targets. It can sometimes even locate targets before you see them yourself, whether you're doing Crucible or doing a Nightfall solo. Watch as I'm fighting this taken enemy and then you have the scoring guy that keeps making himself go immune by going invisible, which I hate more than anything. But it's awesome because the Arc Soul can kind of take care of him since he's a closer target while I'm shooting off in the distance. It doesn't do much damage, but every little bit counts, especially when you're doing Nightfall solos and things. It can take care of multiple targets. And with the bottom tree, your Arc Soul and your Rift last even longer. And then if you pair it with Electrostatic Surge, which means if your allies are near you, it charges even faster. So you can use this to help when you're on your own, kind of trying to get moats and take care of adds as a Reaper. Or if you're stacking up towards a boss, having four people with that on their shoulder, the damage does add up. And for your entire team, it's not a bad thing to have the Rift just in general and for the longer lasting Rift. And when you pair it with a nine or up recovery, even an eight is good. When they're trying to burn you down, having that Rift that comes in clutch last second is really nice. And the higher your recovery, the faster the meteor charges itself back up. I don't play much Gambit anymore, but back when Gambit Prime was out, me and YouTubers used to 2v4 teams. I would pair Bottom Tree Arc with his Top Tree Nova, and they really paired well together for reaping, for invasions, for boss melting, and by having that extra damage, can actually help you come in clutch to take victories. This was a 3v4, but that extra damage does pile up. As far as your grenade with this build, I always recommend grenades that last a long time, such as pulse grenade, thermite grenade, any kind of grape grenade. You can just throw it at your feet, step in it, and it just actually just does more damage over time and can actually shield you from other targets trying to collapse on top of you. And as far as your jump, always go burst glide. If you haven't learned burst glide, you need to learn it. When it comes to speed killing, you are going to get dusted using any other jump but burst glide. The other ones are way too slow, way too floaty, and if you're going up against somebody that knows how to speed kill, they are going to dust you and go clear everything out while you're trying to catch up. Here's a tip, whenever you're falling off of a ledge, don't jump off, just boost down when you're falling down and it gives you a little bit more of a speed boost. I'll show it to you in regular motion. Just remember, don't jump off of ledges, boost off of ledges like that right there. Learn to do that because every small boost matters. The two best ways to jump are when you do your short jump like that, you will boost towards the ground. And then the second way is to boost towards the ground and immediately off the ground. So it's jump, jump, jump. Jump, jump, jump. 
just like that so you cancel off the second jump to have a momentous boost forward and then right here you'll see me boost down right there as I'm falling off that ledge and then I easily catch up to all those hunters to get there a little bit before they do so it adds up over time and when it comes to speed killing getting there first can make you start getting into beast mode that much quicker learn the burst glide because to speed killers we just see that is an advantage over you in your weakness now let's move on to the armor finally sorry it took so long but one mobility three recovery get that recovery mod on there buy the Zer version before he goes away this week if you're watching it at the week that i make this video light reactor is a beast on top of crown of tempest you can get supers within 30 to 35 seconds easily with this on and it comes with fusion reserves if you are unfamiliar with Crown of Tempest, every arc ability kill you get charges all your arc abilities and you can also use it with arc charge balls like this right here. Every time I hit somebody and kill them, I get Conduction Tines, which goes to all of my abilities and my super. Really nice to have, just a quick tip. Also, if you're wielding a sword, it also helps with that as well. If you have Conduction Tines when you pick up a sword, watch the meter going up right now. You see how fast it's going? That's because I'm also getting orbs, but check this out. I'm going to throw the grenade, you see how slow it's going, and then as soon as the conduction tines procs, it starts building up hella fast. So if you're using swords, you can use that to your advantage to get that hella swing, start busting these dudes up if you're doing the menagerie or anything else. Now I want to show you how fast I can get my super back using arc abilities with the fusion rifle such as Telesto or really any fusion rifle. I just have the Telesto on right here because it's a beast in the menagerie. And like I said, it's probably one of the best guns in the game right now for general purpose and for ad slaying. But you see my super ended and I'm already almost halfway there just by fucking knocking these dudes out with Telesto, doing my rising storm melee, and just proccing all these abilities, all these fusion rifle kills, plus the orbs I'm picking up from the masterwork kills. You can see how fast my super is pretty much already back. I'm about to knock these dudes out, pick up a masterwork orb on top of that, and boom, we already have another super within seconds. This is one of the best helmets Zer has sold in a really long time. Don't forget to pick this up. Moving on to the arm piece now, enhanced impact induction, which is 8 seconds off your grenade charge per melee hit to the body, but it has a 6 second cooldown, and the grenade charge mod is for background recharge whenever you're not using your conduction tines because it doesn't stack with it, or for boss battles when you can't proc conduction tines, or a melee against anybody. Make sure it's a restorative warlock arms, 1 mobility, 2 recovery. This is what it looks like in battle when you have enhanced impact induction with the rising storm, or without it, it's still fast with or without. I throw my grenade down, I immediately do the enhanced impact induction that's stacked with the rising storm. Now we have half of our grenade back, and then we have the conduction tines that's actually charging it even more. And now enough time has passed where we can do the enhanced impact induction again, and now we have our grenade back. So if I'm using taken armaments or anything like that to give me heavy ammo, that really pays off in speed killing. Then I'll do it against this knight as well. Throw the grenade, hit him, and bam, half the grenade already back. Impact induction is useful in 95% of Destiny gameplay, but if you're doing something where you're super under light and it's not worth doing the melee to them because if they hit you back you're dead, I would go with the loader instead, but majority of the gameplay you're in, having the enhanced impact induction pays off more than the loader does. Moving on to the chest piece, I'll try to explain this the best that I can, but by having those two grenade charge mods, it lets the grenades start charging in the background, so when you're running from point A to point B, having both of those charging in the background makes the meter stack up just that much more, so by the time you start proccing conduction tines or your rising storm, it had been charging so much in the background that it's pretty much already back by the time you do start proccing those. So whether Grenadier is on, or if you're using it to proc in the background, or if you're using conduction tines, it just ensures that you always have a grenade to fight back and push back enemies have two mobility two recovery and whatever perks in your chest piece that you want and whatever menagerie mods that you want don't focus on the menagerie just the stats on that and that grenade charge mod mixed with whatever weapon loadout you're going to be using for the perks on it now onto the leg piece is three mobility but traction only shows that one mobility and then the hidden one that the game doesn't show so it's three mobility with the traction two recovery use a paragon mod for harder activities that guarantees you a one minute rift conduction times doesn't increase that However, having the perk on the bottom tree when you're around allies does have you get your rift back and it does stack with that paragon mod, so it comes back just that much faster. So whether you're playing Gambit or going out in a solo activity, having that save 20 seconds really does come in clutch. And finally, the bond. Always do recuperation. If you do absolution for extra ability recharge or super recharge, that's not going to matter if your shield busts and you're almost dead. Getting your health back is way more important than getting an ability back because you can get that ability back, but if you die, you're dead. And the harder the activity, the more you want recuperation. You can do whatever mod you want on the bond. It's kind of like a free slot. I do have an impact mod on mine. You can do take an armaments, take an invigoration, anything that you want. A boss resist, even though I don't really care for the little millimeter of health they do add. 
but if they do stack those in shadow keep i might start doing boss resist mods or major resist or whatever but as of right now they don't stack on one another and they give you such a small pinch of health that i don't ever recommend actually using those but make sure that you grab those orbs and when you do you get your health back because that's what's going to keep you running and gunning and staying in the battle always getting that health back your main job when using the Parashock build is add clearing. That is your main objective. Roaming around and killing all the red bars that you can. It's not as effective on orange and yellow bars, but it's not really meant for those at the same time. That's when you kind of need to stack weapons with the abilities. But you can make a pathway on any strike. Most nightfalls, if you're not cranking the difficulty up too much, it's just to clear a pathway so you can run and gun and get fast times and get a ton of adds killed with the super on because the ability recharge is dope. Everything about the build is dope. You have hella armor too when you pop your super, collecting all these orbs, stacking with the light reactor on top of that. You have great height, you have great mobility, you have great recovery. Everything about this build calls for add control. If you're a reaper in Gambit as well, it's really beast in there. But anytime I do strikes, this is my favorite build to wear. Anytime I'm doing menagerie and I just feel like slaying out, this is the build that I always go to. I don't really care about boss melting that much. I have more fun in the game slaying the adds. Anybody can stand in the well, like I've said a million times, and shoot a grenade launcher. But when it comes to slaying out and fucking adds up, that's where I have most fun in this game. You have dope recovery, such as that situation right there. It comes back right on time, so I'm never outside the battle at any time. And if you pair it with a weapon like Telesto, it's just even more badass to have. But you can use any kind of fusion that you want. Or you don't even have to use Light Reactor. You can use Hands-On or stuff like that. But Light Reactor with it is just retarded. Super dope. Fast supercharge. You have the landfall to stagger all of your enemies. Fuck that guy because he's just going to waste my super energy. I don't recommend sitting too long on yellow and orange bars because it's just a waste of super at that point. And it's not even meant for these type of ads. It's meant for the ground control. You're trying to keep all the little pinch ads, all the ones that are like tinking health off of people. Keeping those off of everybody's back is what this build is made for. And then when you mix it with your weapons, picking up those masterwork orbs, getting your recuperation proc, staying in the battle, getting these fast 30 second supers, the faster you kill with the fusion rifle with your abilities, the faster your super comes back. So if you want to get 30 second supers, just keep spraying and playing because that's what it's meant for. Just circle around these bosses. This is what you do with Parashock. It's meant to be the red bar king. And if you have to hit a boss with it, it's going to tickle this dude to death. But it does do a little bit of damage now that it stacks up for 5 seconds or whatever. But like I said, Parashock or Parashock Prime if you're playing Gambit. Either way, the only difference in the Prime version is using Taken Armaments on the Bond. But just roam around, keep your team alive, keep all these little dudes off of everybody. It's the ultimate fun build. Run and gun fun is what I call it because that's just what it is. You're constantly running around. You're slaying all the ads. You're having the most fun in the game because you're not having to sit back and just worry on one single target at a time. Your job is you are an army of one to roam around and just slay out all these little dudes and keep everybody off everybody. And that's what I like to do. I can melt all these other bosses if I wanted to build out for it. But this build is just so damn fun and is one of my favorite builds of all times. And I actually got top 10 Reaper in Gambit because of this build. Because this is all I wore and I just walked around and slayed the shit out of everybody. Picked up moats, went and dumped them, rinse and repeat with those fast ass supers. At the time that I played Gambit, I didn't use Light Reactor on this helmet. I used Hands On. It was still a fast supercharge. But damn dude, Light Reactor, I wish they wouldn't have waited so long to sell it. But I'm glad that they finally did, even though it's so close to Armor 2.0 and it's not really going to matter then. But Parashock, is just, it just deserves a lot of attention for all the shit that it gets by being called Tickle Fingers and stuff. If you know how to use this build right, it's one of the most nastiest builds in the game for 90% of the activities that you can come across in this game. So Parashock Prime, I enjoyed the fuck out of you. This is the part of the video where you can screenshot this build, put it in your file, Whatever mod you want to put on the bond, whether you want to do another Paragon mod, an Impact mod, a Grenade Charge mod, whatever you want to do, completely up to you. There's so much free space on this. You have dope stats, dope ability recharge, mix it with a Telesto or any kind of dope fusion rifle, and the Parashock Ultra is there for you bros to have fun. It's a fun build and that's what it's made for. This video is sponsored by LifetimeController.com. One control is a lifetime of gaming. If your controller ever goes out, just pay a shipping return fee or a small core fee depending on the control that you have. And you'll never be without a control again, Guardian. Thanks so much. If you want to support, you can hit me up at paypal.me slash 
click join to become a part of our beast squad or shop and get a souvenir at teespring.com slash Ristophilus. Hopefully Armor 2.0 will revive the Parashock once again to slay out with. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. In space.